You are watching Senegal vs. Poland at the 2018 World Cup. It looks different to what you are used to because you can't see the skin color. Make a guess, who is more athletic and quick and who is more tactically organized? In a survey, more than 100 sports fans were asked the same, but half of them saw this original broadcast and the other half saw the stick figures. 62% of the rendered video test group called one of the teams more athletic. Of the test subjects watching the original broadcast, the figure was even as high as 70%. The huge difference, though, those who couldn't see the actual players described Poland as more athletic. Those who could named Senegal. How can that be? There is subconscious bias in how a lot of people analyze the game and how a lot of people assign traits to players of different races. That's Sam Gregory. He was one of those who did the survey, which is pretty impressive because he managed to measure how attitude towards skin color and gender affect how we see football. In other words, when we watch football, we see something else than we think we see. Why is that? He can help. Striker Romelu Lukaku once told the New York Times, it's never about my skill when I'm compared to other strikers. Generally speaking, comparisons in sports are a huge thing. Reason and cause for an infinite number of stats and part of pundits, commentators and sport media's everyday work. We compare literally everything. Size, goals, skills and express it not only in numbers, but also with words. The question Lukaku raised, however, is what role does his skin color play? Sito Madu documents in his work how we report on black players, especially from Africa. Regardless of position, regardless of talent, regardless of what they actually did on the field, it was always that they were big and strong or they were fast and strong in every single article that I pulled up. It was consistently the same. Uh, the same phrasing, the same sort of language, the same sort of reduction. It doesn't matter what their actual qualities are. Pace and power is one of the most widespread of the biases to describe black players. In numbers, commentators are 6.59 times more likely use the phrase power when the player has a darker skin tone. And it's 3.38 times more likely that we hear how fast they are. It doesn't matter whether their individual quality is being talked about or a team performance is being honored. Let's return to this game. Before Poland faced Senegal, you could read about what made the Africans so special. What's the most outstanding quality of Senegal's best player on the pitch? And guess the reason for Senegal's victory after the match? You got it. Lazy stereotypes can be found in tabloid and quality press. We read, see and hear them for decades. Let me show you this. Writer Rose Avaleth posted this satirical bingo card. It shows the most common descriptions used for black players for the World Cup 2018. In addition to the familiar physical stereotypes, we find others, intellectual ones, like lack of finesse, disorganized, raw talent or beast. Also familiar, but in a different way. Time to introduce you to Dr. Emilia Roag, writer of the book Why We All Matter. Explanation is, uh, is pretty clear and straightforward. Black people have been represented as subhuman, as a justification for their enslavement, their exploitation. And, uh, and so that's why these images have not disappeared from our collective subconscious. It means that until today, black people are represented as being less intelligent than white people. This was ingrained in science. It's a legacy of colonialism and slavery. The fact that black people are considered to be gifted is also something that undermines their performance, right? It's like, you know, by nature, they are better. They don't need to work hard for that. Whereas a white athlete who comes to the same level have, has to work so hard and has to um, really put so much effort into it, whereas for black people that's natural. See these diagrams? They are the result of more than 2,000 statements from commentators in 80 matches across four European top leagues. I would like to draw your attention to these bars. 
When intelligence is praised, 62% of the time it was directed at players with light skin tone. It flips when criticizing players. Then 63% is directed at players with darker skin tone. The situation is similar when commentators talk about versatility or quality. And check who's in the lead when we hear comments on work ethic or leadership. Those with a lighter skin tone. That's why Victor Ozyman, for instance, is more likely known for his physicality, while this white guy, also quite tall, strong and for sure fast, is praised for his intelligence and work ethic. Even the compliments of black players when they're doing well, right? Like he's like an engine, he's like a machine, he's like a beast, or like all these compliments are still part of that way of like reduction. And I think there's a very long history of not just black athletes, but just black people in general. Football is of course not the only sport affected and off the pitches, courts and fields, there are more examples to find taking place everywhere. There's no single domain in our society that remains untouched by unconscious bias. It happens on the labor market, it happens in the media, it happens you know, in interpersonal interactions, uh, it happens in literature, it happens everywhere. If unconscious bias influences the labor market, what influence does it have on footballers' jobs? And there are certain positions on a football pitch which tend to go to more athletic players and um, you'll often see black players kind of pushed into those directions. There's no reason why players should be pushed into those positions, but because of racial bias, potentially of coaches, potentially of academies, potentially all across the world, um, players are pushed into those positions from a young age. The whole thing has many more effects, like aren't referees more likely to send off a person described as strong and animalistic? Apart from that, would you hire a manager who has been described by the media as a hard-working, intelligent leader or a strong and fast, raw diamond? And there are far more examples of how we lose diversity and quality. So what's the solution here? There are at least two. I think the important thing is to start realizing how do I see that person? Why do I see those qualities and those characteristics first? Why am I not in a position to see this human as a human with complexities, with um, good and bad sides, but why do I need to highlight the negative sides first? Does it make me feel better as a white person? Is it something that can, um, that can reinforce a hierarchy that puts me on top, right? And so these are good questions to ask. It has to be a top-down thing because Football fans are like they watch football. They like listen to what commentators say. They listen to like what is written about, or they read what is written about these players, and they absorb the language sometimes without even knowing it. And so I think you sort of have to like, <laughs> in a good way, brainwash people into being able to see players in a more full and substantial way. What's your take on this? Leave a comment. Make sure it's a respectful one. And thanks a lot for watching until the end.